What's up guys, welcome back to episode 2 of my 3D Java game development tutorials. Uh, this is exactly where we left off, I haven't changed anything, we're just, we're, we're, we are ready to keep on working on this, uh, on this epic game. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, say that we need to do some really important things today to Probably the most important things um, early on in, early on in development, and the first thing is we need to talk about threads. So first thing I want to do is create a thread. Okay, so I'll explain this code right now. Actually, private is the visibility modifier. Basically, private says that only this class can can use threads. Okay, only display Java can use this. Public means that anything in the whole freaking world can use it. Um, can see it. Basically, so private means that yeah, only only display Java can see it. Thread is um, basically the way to explain thread is it's it enables you to do multiple tasks simultaneously. So you know at the same time, um, which is as you can imagine really important for games because we 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 want to be able to render multiple things at once, all that all that good stuff. I'm not going to go too far into it, and yeah, as you know in Java to create a thread to create an object we need to create. Okay, hang on. To use it, we need to create an object, and we need to give that object a name, so I've just called it thread because that's easy to remember. Um, and the other thing I want to create is a boolean, again, private, um, and a boolean is something that's true or false. Okay, two possible values, true or false. Um, and I'm going to call it running, and I want to set it to false because it's not running at the moment. Um, our game isn't running at the moment. Not yet, that is. Um, yeah, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually initialize this thread. Um, and the way we do that is I'm going to create a, um, a, a method called start. Um, and in that method, I'm going to just simply check um, for something really quick. I'm going to go if running, return. And uh, this might be a bit difficult to understand, so I'll explain it. Um, this is sort of the way that I want to do this tutorial. I don't want to add too much code at once. I'd rather have shorter videos where I add, you know, like 10, 20 lines of code, but I explain everything for all of you guys who don't understand what this means. Um, you know, I'll explain it for you guys so that you, you can understand what it means because that's sort of, that's the point of a, of a tutorial. If you want to copy code from someone, just, you know, go just d download like an open source game or something, which, you know, d download the source code to that and you will be fine. Um, so yeah, so basically this is an if statement, and it's basically saying if running equals true, then return. Now what return means is it's going to exit out of the me out of the method, because the reason that we type this code is because think about this, if it's already running, so if running equals true, we don't want to initialize the game again because it's already running. So ignore that. Um, but if it's not running then don't return. In other words, don't get out of this method. Keep doing whatever's below. Um, and by the way, if you, if you hit Control shift f on your keyboard, that's going to format your code. So, um, in other words, if you're going like 600 plus 23, I don't know, divided by 6 times 8, yeah, Control shift f and it'll set it out really nicely. So yeah, that's Control shift f um, We could put this into curly braces. I usually like putting if statements in curly braces, braces um, but you don't need to, and because it's one word, return kind of looks nicer if you don't. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Um, so if it's, in other words, if it's not running, then set running to equal true because we want it to start running. Um, and the most important thing probably is to actually initialize the thread. And the way we do this is we go thread equals new thread. This. Um, and again, it's undefined because we need to implements runnable um, and yeah no more errors it's giving us an error here because you know we need to we actually need to run we actually have to make a method here called run public void run and there we go no errors yay um, okay so that's pretty simple and the other thing we want to do is actually start the thread so that's how we initialize a thread, um, and the other thing that I uh, the other thing that I want to add at this point is actually a stop method as well. This isn't really necessary, but because I want this to uh, to run in, as an applet later, um, and basically what an applet is, it's 
it enables um, this to be run inside a web browser. So the the I reckon the most popular example is if you think about Minecraft. If you go to Minecraft.net, you can actually play the game inside the web browser. That's because it's an applet. So I you know it's always good to be able to do that in the future. So that's what I want to do right now. So I'm making a stop method. So this is basically the reverse of the start method. Um, it, the explanation mark means not. So if it's not running, then don't worry about this method. Get out of this method if it's not running because if it's not running, then we've already we've already fulfilled our duty. Um, so if it's not running, then set running. Sorry, if it if it is running and we want to stop it, then set running to equal false and thread dot join. Um, and we actually need to we need actually need to try to do that. You can see that it says um, you know surround with try and catch. I'm just going to type that out. So try to join this thread, and if that fails, then simply catch an exception. And this is this is just normal Java syntax and then we want to exit obviously yeah so that's pretty much that's our start and stop method how much time are we at six minutes brilliant um, quickly explain this uh, so I was going to try and join uh, and join is it's gonna it wait it's gonna wait for the thread to die so it's gonna try and end the thread if that does not work then it's gonna generate an exception and again we're creating the exception object we've called it eight um, what it's going to do is it's going to print stack, stack trace, which is really hard to explain, and then it's going to actually exit the program. So yeah, um, that's our start and stop thing. Um, and finally, I also want to create the main game loop. Game loop. So how are we going to do this? We'll make a while loop. So while it, while running equals true, do whatever's there, and we'll we'll talk about that next time. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is actually. Um, I, I really like to check if this code is currently operational. In other words, if it's working, because if I if I code for an hour and then I go back and then I'm like, hang on, this 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 isn't this doesn't even work, you know. And obviously, it's not gonna it's not gonna throw us an error because the syntax is correct. Um, so say if we had an error like that, so if it's not running, blah blah blah, um, then if we run it, you know, we're not gonna see the difference. It's running, it's fine. Running is here, by the way. Um, so the way we um. The way that I like to check it is simply by going sys. Oh, hang on. I should probably um, actually initialize that method. Um, so as you can see, we're not actually using a stop yet. We'll we'll do that later when when we go into applet. Um, yeah. So if it's if it's okay. So what this code does is it's saying game. This is the good thing about Eclipse as well. If you hit your um, if you put the the typey thingy on a word, it's going to highlight all the words of the same name. So we can see that game is the object of this display class. So it's gonna it's gonna it's it's gonna search this class for the method called start, which is right here, and it's going to obviously you know run that method. So that's really important. And what we need to do is we need to to check the code. Best way to do it is just print print a line and I don't know working working and what that's going to do is if we run it as you can see I've made an error here on purpose we can be like hmm it's running but it's not working why is that then you go back and you're like oh right of course I put this here run it and ta-da yay it's working um, so that's that's sort of like a way to test it. We don't we obviously don't need this, um, but yeah. So that's that's the way I like to do it. Um, and that's probably the end for this tutorial. Um, next time, I think we'll get started on some graphic stuff. I'm not sure. Eh, yeah, we, we we probably will. So make sure you watch the next tutorial, which will come out tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna try and make one of these every day. Um, and yeah, so tomorrow we're going to try, and let me just format this, um, tomorrow we're going to try and implement some graphics things, maybe actually draw some pixels to the screen, so that'll be exciting. And yeah, that's it, so I'll see you guys later. Bye.